This podcast is brought to you by our presenting sponsor, Black Acres Roastery. Black Acres Roastery is an artisan coffee roaster located in the Highlingtown district of Baltimore. Every roast, they strive to bring out the best qualities in unique coffees from around the world. They ethically source beans and curate roasting profiles that provide each cup of coffee a story. My favorite is Midnight Train, a dark roast with notes of cocoa nibs, graham cracker, and stone fruit. Delicious. Also, check out their cold brew. Temperatures are changing, so cold brew is going to be in effect. So stay woke and check out their website, www.blackacrescoffee.com. Tell them Rob Lee sent you. Welcome to Getting to the Truth in His Heart. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today's guest is the owner of a company specializing in hand-poured artisanal scented soy wax candles, 228 Grant Street Candles. We have Kendall Brown. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Rob. Glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Um, and, and thank you for uh, bearing with me as I stumble through my intro. I practice. I promise I practice. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I gave that um, very general, I felt it online, uh, <laughs> kind of uh, POV of your business. But but get, speak on what your business is about and what you're about as a entrepreneur. Sure. Um, I'll try to give the... Uh, Shortened version, it, it's hard to co- collapse the whole conversation into uh, a short, sweet soundbite. But um, I was on a, a journey to find a more um, contemplative path that engaged my body and work. Um, I was sitting behind a desk all day and in meetings all day. Uh, I worked in theological education, uh, graduate level theological education for about 10 years. And then I did work for my denom- for my form- my denomination as a diversity consultant, in-house diversity consultant. So I was in meetings all day long, and um, just needed a more creative life. And for a number of years, I was searching, and I'd be in the car, and I'd look at my hands and literally say, "I know I'm supposed to be doing something with my hands. I know I'm supposed to be doing something." Um, I played piano as in my younger years, and just as time progressed, got farther and farther away from that life. So long story short, candles were have always been a part of my creative process whenever I had to write or write a speech or um, whenever I was doing interviews, when I worked in admissions, I, I would light a candle. Um, I love candle, candles. I love um the ambiance, the mood, I love fragrance, I love scent. Um, the ways in which scent can change a mood for me has always been kind of magical. Um, so I was in a store uh, in 2015, um, a store that I won't name, and walked in and as I always do, I went into went to straight to the candle section and I picked up this candle that was in this beautiful, old style retro apothecary jar, like a, like a, a medicine jar. Mm-hmm. And it was just so beautiful. And I, I don't say this to everyone, but I literally heard a voice in that moment that said, you can make this. I mean, candle making was nowhere on my radar. I had made, done some things with candles as a part of an art project in high school, but had never made candles from start to finish. But I heard in that moment, like as clear as I know my name, you can make this. And I went home like a madman and got on the computer and Googled and looked up how to make a candle and watched, you know, 20 video, 20 videos on YouTube. And the concept just started coming and just this whole, whole notion around, you know, I could do something creative with my hands and um, and it would be a reflection of something that was meaningful for me. So I got some supplies and made a few samples and sent them to family members and said, hey, burn these and tell me what you think. And here we are. Um, that was in 2015 and we're in 2021. And Candle Company is in the candle. Our candles are in um just under have been in just under a hundred stores uh we just announced uh select j crew stores this week uh from coast to coast um in every major city in the u.s so it's been an amazing ride 
it's been an amazing ride. So that's, that's big. Um, and, uh, it, it's, it's great to hear that it, it just came from something that you felt like I, I need to do more. I have this call. Like I need to do something else. Like this is fine, yeah. but I need to do something else. Uh, that was, um, I always connect to that. Cause that was similar to my journey going into to this area and kind of something that I'm looking, looking at in the real, in the real world right now, if like my day job is this, but I'm not feeling satisfied in that way. And it's like, how can I balance it? Because I, I want to do other things. So having you speak on that is you, part of your experience and going to candles, which it's an underrated of the, of the five senses. I, I heard that it's actually 24 senses, but of the five senses, smell is one of the most underrated ones. So, um, yeah. Exactly. And, um, and this is, this relates to one of the questions I have a little bit later, but I, I'd be remiss if I don't show you this. I'm, uh, in here right now. It's probably a little blurry, but I have the, uh, coconut bergamot, uh, uh, candle in my <laughs> studio and I was burning it before I put this microphone on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And you have one of the black tumblers and there's a story with those tumblers. They are really hard for us to get. So yeah, you have, you have a prized possession. <laughs> <laughs> there's a glass shortage right now during the pandemic. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who would have thunk it a glass shortage, you know? I know, I know about the metal shortage and all of that stuff. I couldn't buy weights and yeah. all, or even punching bags during the pandemic. Cause I wanted to do this whole at home workout thing and it just wasn't connecting for me. Right. So in, in that, in those earlier iterations where you were involving like your, your, your close network, family and friends of, Hey, I'm um, burning this. Let me know what you, what you think. What, what were your earlier um, scents and fragrances that you uh, kind of had out there? What were those test fragrances? Actually, just about everything is still a part of our current collection because um, for the most part, I can only make things make sense and incorporate fragrances that I enjoy. Um, I made a couple of things early on for a couple of stores that were special requests, and I absolutely hated them. Um, and vowed that, you know, for the rest of if I have any control whatsoever, um, I, I would only make things. So those test fragrances, uh, I think I started with the, uh, sweet orange and Moroccan spice. Um, and that has, that was one of our initial fragrances and it's still a part of the collection. There are a couple of fragrances that have been either tweaked or changed or deleted. Um, we had a cedar and sandalwood in the beginning, which, um, kind of hit or miss there you know some folks loved it and then some folks uh, not so much so because uh it didn't have as wide of an appeal um it was it was a little unbalanced to be honest so that's not a part of the collection anymore got it i, I think um i went to one of the local establishments here and i and i got this uh this one that i, I showed you earlier in a smaller uh i think it's this metal container the smaller metal container that has yeah. the amber and sandalwood and that's that's the go-to like my, my girlfriend and i were debating she was like i i don't know i kind of like this one but this one is also good i was like i'm just gonna buy both of them i was like they both have their merits i'm just gonna buy both of them because the smells are that good um <laughs> So I appreciate so speak, it, man. Appreciate oh, your totally. support. Absolutely. Um, so, so speak on, like you, you touched on it. Um, but so going into it, the, you, you didn't have that idea or that thought that, Hey, one day I'm going to be working in the candle business or what have you. <laughs> Not uh, at all. So if, if you could go back, um, would you have chosen like a, a, a different business or would, would this candle seem to be like, that's, that's the right space that you're in right now? No, things have lined it up as they needed, have lined up as they needed to, man. Um, I used to go, you know, there, there's something in my history that I can point to directly and say, oh, this was because of this and this was because of this. So I have been a fan of festivals and farmers markets and you know, it's my putzing on weekends. So that's what I yeah. do. I go to farmer's markets, open air markets. And when I lived, I lived in DC for a few years and that's kind of really where I, where the bug really hit me of going to Saturday markets. And I used to talk to some of the vendors and, you know, 
I, re- I remember a, a conversation with one of the vendors. He was an art art vendor. Uh, he was a painter. And I said, you know, man, how do you structure your life to be able to do this? Because he's doing this full time. And I, you know, just chatted with these guys and, and folks, um, men and women who, um, you know, had stepped out and made that, you know, that leap of being a full-time artisan, full-time entrepreneur. And so, um, yeah, all of those things were leading me to this point. You know, I didn't realize that there, you know, those conversations would be a part of a part of my own entrepreneurial story. So. That's, that's great going out there yeah. and kind of, um, seeing it. Like, I think, yeah. Th- those things are kind of um, going to like the farmer's markets and making that part of what you're doing. It feels almost um, transactional sometimes, but when you're going there, you're like, let me pick your brain a little bit. Let me have like mm-hmm. a person to person interaction. And I-, I think that's one of the things that that people have learned over the, the, the course of the last 12 to 16 months of these like connections, people have been a little bit more deeper in their conversations. And I think that that was the thing that you were doing early on and gave you that juice and that kind of background to say, you know what, I I can do this. I can, you know, just informed you in that way. Exactly. So how, how has it been over the last year? And and I'll say this, I'll say this, and it's, it's going to be, it's going to sound weird, but also it's going to be kind of funny, I think. So we've been home for the last year plus, we noticed the different things in our house, the different smells in our house. Uh, so, so how how has your business changed in terms of maybe uh, uh, sales and maybe like um, line? You mentioned earlier glass to glass shortage. How has your business changed over the last year plus when it comes to supply chain and getting things out there? Yeah, it's um, it's bitter bittersweet for us because I I recognize that for many makers and many entrepreneurs, um, this past year and a half has been rough. You know, I know folks who have, who had small storefronts and studios and workspaces who had to give up those leases and move back into their homes. And, um, you know, I'm connected to, um, the community of, of makers and artisans that I see, you know, over every weekend, Prior to the pandemic, I would see them at shows and events because it's what I do. Um, so, you know, I recognize that for many people, it has been a time of tremendous loss and not even talking about the sickness and the death that, you know, our communities have experienced. Um, fortunately for us, um, I, I call candles the comfort food of home goods. Um so the candles are a a simple luxury that people will splurge on or, um, or um, because, you know, especially during the pandemic, as they've been in their spaces, you know, they've wanted to have that that centering piece, that touchstone, that the fragrance and the aroma and the grounding that a candle brings. So, you know, I have really been touched by the ways in which. Um, folks have incorporated our product into their home environments during the pandemic. I can't tell you the number of stories, you know, I can't tell you the number of care packages that folks have sent over, over the course of the pandemic, you know, the care packages that have gone to first responders, the care packages that have gone to, you know, for the mother who was across the country that, you know, child wasn't able to visit for, you know, over a year. So, um, it has been incredible. And fortunately for us, we, um, first thing that happened last May, we were mentioned by New York magazine and the strategist, um, uh, a tweet went out around black companies to support during the uprising. And that tweet went viral. Um, was sitting at home and I get notifications on my phone, uh, from our online store. And it just started ding, 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 ding. And, you know, it was, it was, it was incredible. So that happened. And then, uh, a month or two later, uh, was sitting at my desk and got an email from 
the Today Show saying, hey, we want to, we're doing, we're featuring small businesses and we want to uh, feature you. And I, they found us from that uh, New York Magazine uh, tweet. And so we were featured on the Today Show on Jill's uh, Steals and Deals. They do a morning segment. And that was incredible. We did a few years business in a matter of a couple of uh, day. Um, so had to scramble and hire a bunch of temporary staff and get folks trained. And at one time we had about 12 people working, I think. Um, so that happened. And then a couple months later, the exact same thing happened with <laughs> ABC world news sitting at my desk, email comes across. We're doing a feature on small businesses and we'd like to feature you tonight. Um, we had very few jars on hand, um, didn't have anywhere the inventory and I was going to turn it down. I said to my staff, um, you know, I just got this incredible email and they want to feature us tonight and I'm sorry, but we just can't do it. And they basically knocked me over and said, (laughs) no, oh no, we are going to do this. We have been given... This opportunity, you know, when so many businesses have closed and so many folks are struggling right now and we have been given this opportunity, we are going to do it. So both times it took us over a month to get all those orders out, but we just put in, you know, a notice on our website saying, you know, we'll fill them as quickly as possible and try to keep folks informed. And we did the thing about the ABC segment, and I know I'm, I'm running long with the story, no, but the The thing with the ABC news segment is that that was on a Wednesday. We were featured on a Wednesday and kind of had the longest spot in the segment. We were last. So um, that happened on a Wednesday. On Thursday, they came back and I sent the the person who did the segment um, a, a little note and said, you know, we did, we had a thousand orders Thank you. Thank you so much for featuring us. They came back the next night and said, 228 Grant Street just wants to thank you for over a thousand orders and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. We did more the second day (laughs) than the first day. And then that was Thursday night. And then Friday night, they did a recap of the entire week and and just did a, a, a quick shot on us again. So Man, it was so <laughs> crazy. It was so crazy. Um, but, you know, folks, folks, other makers and other business owners came to me and said, man, who's your publicist? You know, how in the world are you all getting all this kind of visibility? And I'm like, you know, it was just kind of, it was synchronicity. Um, yeah. It just, it just really happens. You know, I believe that this work that I'm doing is inspired. It is, you know, my community, it is my faith, it is my ancestors, our name, 228 Grant Street, which I didn't share. Um, (laughs) It pays homage to my grandparents, my late maternal grandparents. My grandmother was, she didn't make candles, but all day long she was, she was a homemaker and she was gardening, she was canning. And the thing about her, Clara Eccles, God rest her soul. You never came to her her home without being offered something that was made by her hand. So yeah. there was always soup on the stove. There was always, you know, we were southern in, in the southern part of Virginia, five minutes from North Carolina. There were always some turnip greens in the freezer. There was always <laughs> some cornbread somewhere around. There was always some biscuits that were left over from, from the morning breakfast. And there was always, you know, a piece of pie or a piece of cake or... Um, some plum, we had, she had plum trees in the back of, back of the house, you know, she made plum preserves. So you were going to be offered something (laughs) made by Miss Clara, or if you were a woman, she was going to offer you a cutting from her garden. She was an avid gardener. So she is my inspiration, my primary inspiration. My mother is as well, because my mother has a creative edge, um, but my grandmother was the one who was always giving, you know, light to other people, um, things that were made by her hands, simple acts of hospitality. So 
Um, I am my grandmother's child. I have a desire to connect with people through things that are made by my hand. That's that's wonderful. And it's mm -hmm. great to hear carrying on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's 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 just great. I mean, because uh, it's it's something that gets lost and what have you that. Oh, we don't do that any, anymore. It's like, no, carry that over, carry it over. Right. Keep it. Exactly. Keep it going. Exactly. Um, so you, you touched on the local makers and um, one of the. Um, other guests I've had on this podcast is Lawrence from Heavy Paper Co. And I, I saw some work he did for you. So I was just like, all right, you know, that's synchronicity, those connections. Uh, Baltimore Small. Quick, quick fact about Lawrence. Lawrence and I went full time, I think the same month. We, yeah, we jumped out and left our jobs and went full time, same time. Love to see it. So Love we to had, see it. We've been, we've been walking this, this walk together. Yeah. So you touched on the, um, the, the, the Saturday market and, um, you even touched on a little bit of your, your background with, um, piano. So what do you enjoy doing when you're not running your business? I mean, it's fulfilling all of these orders that the TV has been, you know, <laughs> <laughs> filling up with. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I really enjoy like this past weekend, Saturday morning, I got up and went to the Saturday market and just putzed around and, you know, smell the flowers and bought some flowers and, you know, I got them, got them right here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Went to the Saturday market, putzed around. Putzing is my inspiration. Sunday, I got up and did the same thing. Um, you know, my, my spouse, he's not as much of a putzer at markets, but he has, he has, join this journey with me. So sometimes he'll get up and say, Oh, let's go to the market. So, yeah. you know, that has been a joy. Um, um, so putzing, um, I enjoy just the, the, the visual stimulation of seeing other folks who are doing what they love. Um, you know, um, I lived in Northern California for a while and I, I still miss the markets. You know, there's a, there's a market pretty much, every day of the week in a neighborhood throughout the summer. So you can go from neighborhood to neighborhood, like on a Monday, it's in one neighborhood, Tuesday, it's in another neighborhood. And you can go to markets all week long in Northern California. Yeah. Um, so, so I really miss, miss that. So I soak it up whenever, whenever I have a chance. Um, I love going to independent shops, love going to bookstores and browsing for, for inspiration and just to, you know, to soak up, you know, I'm a little country boy from the bustling metropolis of Danville, Virginia. That's a joke. <laughs> it's not a bustling metropolis. So, um, you know, and my dad used to take me to the library and, um, when I was a kid and, you know, just seeing what was out there in the world was just, so much fun to me, you know, browsing magazines and browsing books. And, and I still have that love and joy of, of experience, experiencing the world through, through books, through putzing. Um, so that's primarily what I do. I have a Peloton that's looking at me right now that I, <laughs> that I haven't been on in a bike that I haven't been on in a couple of weeks because I just had gallbladder surgery a couple of weeks ago. So I'm about to get back on the bike, but yeah, putzing. Um, I love coffee houses. I love, I love co coffee shop culture. And honestly, w one of the things that inspired me uh, years ago was, you know, I'm a little bit older than the millennial generation, um, but I remember seeing millennials. Um, you know, I, when I was out of grad school, um, but seeing them in coffee houses working. Um, and, you know, some were, I guess, independent contractors or they worked from home or they had the ability to, to work elsewhere. But seeing that kind of freedom um, inspired me and made me know that, you know, I could possibly do structure my life in that kind of way because my generation didn't do that. Um, I'm in my late 40s. So, you know, we we were believe that you have to be tied to a desk in a traditional job, but it was millennials who first inspired me um, uh, and let me know that, you know, I could live life in, you know, a, a way in which 
was against the norm. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a um, that's a situation I, I run in on occasion, and uh, I'm I'm 36, and uh, mm-hmm. my, my partner she's 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 in her her 40s, whatever well, Gen X, right, right, you know, and mm-hmm. um, you know, definitely that's I, I'm more of a hey man, let's balance it out, man. Look, here's my lifestyle. Let the job work to my lifestyle, <laughs> right? Exactly. And, and she's mm-hmm. like, I got to go to work. I don't work these extra hours. I was like, come on, babe, <laughs> let's just do this. <laughs> and I try to include her into kind of blending what the day job for me is with what my creative interest is, because that's the thing that actually gives me life as yeah, opposed yeah. to just going there for the paycheck. And I learned that, that clock. Yeah. I learned that about 12, 13 years ago. Cause I, you know, I, you shouldn't be burned out at 24 and right, right. I, I was burned out really early and you know, I would, you know, just be very open and very vulnerable in because it's a risk, right? Of, hey, you know, maybe a few less hours, maybe focus on this thing that is very important to you instead of trying to scrape those hours away for your creative pursuit. So I'm sharing my millennial laziness uh, <laughs> with her. I don't think I don't think it's laziness. I don't think it's laziness at all. I think it's just a, a realization that other other ways of being and other ways of earning a living um, are are an option. You know, if yeah. you can think, if you can, you know, think outside of the box. So I, you know, it it was in vogue, you know, or it probably still is in vogue for people to uh, kind of diminish millennials, uh, but <laughs> that that hasn't been my experience. Man. <laughs> so I have a, I have a few more questions and then we'll sure. wrap up because this, this has been great. Um, so so what do you enjoy most about your work? I mean, I've heard some really cool things, good business things, good uh, kind of PR things that have been happening. It's like, yeah. pe- you know, you're you're making people's homes smell better. There's places smell better. And I personally, I thank you for that because <laughs> thank you, I have people come over here and they're like, hey, man, Rob, what you doing? I was like, it doesn't smell like I've been in the gym all day. It actually smells <laughs> great in here right now. So okay. so what do you enjoy most about your your work? Um uh, would, would you speak on that for a bit? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it kind of speaks to what we were just talking about. Um, I enjoy my my energy is a, a, a moody MF. <laughs> 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 my mood, um, you know, I, some days I want to be in a coffee house. Mm-hmm. You know, some days I don't want you know, I don't want to be in meetings. I don't want to be uh, behind a desk. I don't want somebody else controlling my calendar. And, you know, being, being able to do what I do, I have some level of control less than when I started, but I have control over how my day is structured. You know, if I'm not feeling like making candles, you know, from, 10 to three, then I have an assistant who can jump in and, you know, shoulder some of the load. Um, if I don't want to do some administrative stuff, I can put that off, you know, a little bit (laughs) (laughs) and no, and nobody's standing over me cracking the whip. Um, I can say no to some jobs, which, you know, there have been, a lot of things, you know, we've had opportunities to do some national kinds of distribution with big box stores and, you know, where I would have to hire, you know, 20 people to make really cheap candles. Um, and, you know, I was able to say no to that. Um, so having the freedom, you know, and I realize that it, it's a blessing. It is privilege. Um, so, you know, it's privileged to be able to structure my day in a way that, that meets my moodiness, you know, um, (laughs) and my, my fickle energy, um, you know, my, my energy, sometimes I just, I want to be in my laptop in a coffee house, (laughs) reading a book and, or I want to be in some independent shops looking around and getting inspiration. Um, and that's, that's all I want to do. And, um, so having the ability to do that, I love, I love, um, the, the markets that we still do. I don't do a lot of markets because candles are really heavy. The, the crates, when I do vendor events and craft shows and stuff, they weigh 80 pounds. 
Yeah, so the guns going. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it gets old after a while. Yeah. <laughs> and I I did that like nonstop for the first three years. Yeah. Three. Uh, I did a ton of shows and pop ups, and so I'm glad that I don't have to be. I don't have to do as much of that. So, but I love connecting with customers. I love you know when folks pick up a candle at my table and say this is otherworldly or this, you know, this takes me to a place or this, you know, changes my mood. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's priceless for me. So yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy those moments. That That's, that's great to hear. And, and frankly, I'm a bit envious of that. So I need to catch up <laughs> in that way. I need to acknowledge that I'm a moody enough. And <laughs> uh, but yeah, that definitely resonates. Always um, romanticized on, uh, I, I listen to a lot of like, and watch a lot of stand up comedy. So I romanticize on this notion of you're working for like an hour a day. It is like, I, I, like I'm getting up at two and I'm going in to do, do work at eight. It's like, I envy that I get up at five and it's like, this, this doesn't work for the long term. Yeah. 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 Um, because someone else is, is punching that clock, but if it was getting up for me, as you, as you touched on, um, it would be much more rewarding and you, you wouldn't be, at least I wouldn't be as I would imagine, um, is not as attentive on certain things as you're always going. And I read this thing recently about um, just uh, the, the the whole work balance of us returning to work and all returning to these desk jobs that um, one thing that we're not even acknowledging that we're going to get impacted by is um, just, just bathroom behavior for sake of argument that, you're able to go to the bathroom whenever. And I hear all the time people like, well, I might as well go, I have a meeting coming up. So let me go to the bathroom real quick, or I need to hold it after this meeting is over. And that freedom of something as simple as, (laughs) you know, and human is going to the restroom. You're uh, letting uh, these norms kind of determine it. And it was just an interesting read. Yeah. 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 This whole notion that we're returning to normal and perhaps it wasn't normal in the first place. You know, uh, especially and for caregivers, you know, the the freedom that they didn't have over their day um, that they have now, you know, it's something we need to talk about. You know? I agree. Yeah. So this is the last question I have. Um, sure. So um, you, you talked about um, you're you're from Virginia, right? Uh, originally. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're now doing business in Baltimore. So so speak on um, what it's been like uh, being in business in here. Describe that. And within that kind of maker community, how has that been for you? It's been absolutely amazing. I just left a meeting earlier today with um, Andy from Made in Baltimore. Um, and part of our conversation was just talking about the ways in which Baltimore is so unique. Uh, the community of makers Baltimore is, uh, uh, you know, it has manufacturing in its DNA yeah. and, um, and I am blessed to be a part of that. You know, I'm not from Baltimore, but I be very clear. I have deep roots in Baltimore. My grandmother's siblings, um, her brother, her two of her sisters, um, relocated here from Virginia to, to find work, to, to raise families. And, um, you know, Baltimore is very much part of our family story. So it's just right. And it's good that, you know, I would land here and kind of bloom and blossom here. Um, my, my, my life has taken roots here in ways in which I had hoped it would take you know, take shape in other places. Um, but I'm so glad that it, that it happened here and it's just, it's right. And, you know, I believe my, my ancestors have something to do with that. So. That's, that's great. And I like how you said bloom and blossom connecting back to the flowers that you showed earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So that's pretty much all the questions that I have. And I like to offer the opportunity for um, all of my guests to just, just make a buffoon out of yourself, shamelessly plug uh, your social media website, all that good stuff. Where can he find you? (laughs) Yeah. um, 228 Grant Street and street spelled out dot com. Um, is our social media handle um, on Facebook, Instagram. I don't do much on Twitter. Um, need to do more. Um, our website, 228grandstreet.com. 
Um, all of our products are available there. That's actually the best place to go for the widest selection of fragrances. And um, just when folks are looking at the fragrances, because some of the combinations are unique, you know, all of them are balanced. Nothing is going to uh, punch you in the nose or be offensive in terms of fragrance combinations, but they're all, you know, very curated blends. Um, so um, look at what we have. And uh, if you have a question about anything, our contact information is there. Send us a note. Um, we, you know, love connecting with our customers. So that's great. Um, and, and thank you. Um, I'll do my sign off. So uh, for Kendall Brown of 228 Grand Street Candle Company, I'm Rob Lee saying that there are great smells in and around Baltimore because of 228 Grand Street Candle Company. Uh, <laughs> all you have to do is look for them.